Hi, I'm Jade Favag and this is my presentation on digital communication. Okay, so what is digital communication? It is when you communicate to anybody via means of your phone, your laptop, your tablet, stuff like that. Anything that's an electronic device, if you communicate to someone via that, then you are digitally communicating. And the digital communication methods that I'm going to talk about are email, SMS, MMS, online chat, chat rooms, web 2.0 and conferencing. Okay, so starting off, what is email? Email is when you send a message to your internet service provider and then they send a SMTP, which stands for short message, no? It stands for simple mail transfer protocol. Um, and then it sends it to the other person's internet service provider and it goes into their inbox. So who uses it? It's businesses, schools, it's more of a formal setting and generally used for information rather than just having a quick chat. Um, okay, so moving on to SMS, you might know SMS as being called text messages. Um, it stands for short messaging service and you use your phone, you just type out a little message and it sends it through the mobile networks to the receiver's phone. But you have to know the person who you're sending to his phone number, obviously. Um, the first text message, fun fact, was Merry Christmas. So that was quite nice. Um, it's generally a younger generation of people who use this method of communication. Although, to be fair, this method of communication is actually used probably the widest out of all of them because teenagers send messages to their mums, their dads, their cousins. Pretty much everyone has a phone, so it's pretty easy to use this method to communicate. Um, the next one is MMS. MMS stands for Multimedia Messaging Service, and it's similar to SMS in the sense that it goes for your mobile networks and all of that fun stuff you need to know the phone number, um, except with multimedia messages, you're not just sending text, just plain text, it's also including images, audio files, stuff like that, which can also mean that it costs more to send them through your like contract and stuff like that. Okay, so the next one is online chat. Now, following SMS, I believe this is the most common because it's free once you've got an internet connection and a phone. You can't run out of, oh, like, you can't be like, oh, I've run out of messages to send because it's just unlimited. You've got an unlimited amount of messages you can send. It's available anywhere. It's... These are things such as WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, um, what are other ones? Viber, Skype, just things like that. Okay, so chat rooms. There are many different places online where you can go to find chat rooms, like for example, um, Tiny Chat or Omegle or Chat Roulette, things like that, where you're just chatting to new people, you don't necessarily know who they are, although you can set up your own chat room on Skype, although that is referred to as conferencing, which I will touch back on later. Um, so yeah, chat rooms are generally used by people who, not that they don't necessarily have so many friends, but they want to reach a different variety of friends that they not necessarily in their local area. Um, moving on to Web 2.0. Web 2.0 is any website that the content, like for example YouTube, the videos are the content, they're uploaded by the users and so there's a base structure which the web designers make up and then it just, all of the content gets put into that structure. Um, these are things such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Tumblr, DeviantArt. These are used commonly because they're a good way to kill time, 
they make you feel like you're socialising when you're just typing really. Um, and it's also used, they can you can use this as a way to build a career. For example, famous YouTubers such as Zoella, Alfie Days, PewDiePie, among many others, have managed to make a career out of basically just using Web 2.0 and uploading their own content to the YouTube structure. Um, yeah, it's also just a way of expressing yourself in a way that you're not just running down the street shouting out your opinions. Um, okay, so finally, um, conferencing. What is conferencing? Conferencing is generally used by businesses for meetings. For example, if someone can't get to a certain place where they're meant to have a meeting, then they'll conference them in or just to save time on travel and money on flight expenses and stuff like that. Um, so it's generally used to get a quick idea sorted and finished. It can also be used between friends, for example on Skype, so you can just conference each other and just have a quick chat. Okay, so what are the pros and the cons? The pros of email are that you can access it anywhere. If your phone dies, you can just sign on to someone else's phone or computer and access your messages there. There is also a backlog of information, so if you need to find some information which someone had previously emailed to you, you can just search in their name or whatever the information actually is, what the title could be, and then you could just search it in there and then you'll find it like that. However, a con of email is that because it's text based there is no tone or anything to indicate how the person who's sending the message is feeling so this could lead to misinterpretation of a message which could which could then then lead to dramas and all sorts but however a email pro would be that you can send audio files you can send pictures, you can send pretty much anything within a certain limit. So it's just a really good way in my opinion to send information such as documents. Um, a Moving on to SMS, the pros of that is that people can't generally just randomly text you and you get a lot less spam as you do to email because you have a personal phone number and you can't really make them up and you can't really just try and hack and work out someone's phone number. So it's a lot less spam and private in that sense. Although with pretty much all of these, the privacy is as good as the two people or however many people in the situation, communication, um, make it. Because anyone can just print screen anything and just forward that on, which is a danger with any form of digital communication. Okay, so another con of SMS is that if your phone dies, you can't actually access it and you can't, you can't just sign on someone else's phone. However, there is an app for that now called Hotel My Phone. So maybe in the future you will be able to sign on someone's phone and then just get your text messages through that. Sending SMS actually costs money, not only in the you need to buy a phone but you also need to buy a contract or a sim card which allows you to actually send the message and you it can cost up to like 20p to send a text message or you can get unlimited text messages for about 15 to 20 pounds a month depending on your phone um, and obviously network provider okay so moving on to MMS along with SMS they've got pretty much all of the same pros and cons, you've got a limit for the cons and this, well actually although a difference would be that there is a tone because you can send an audio message which means that they can actually hear what you're saying and how you want them to perceive it um, and then yeah so moving on to online chat, the pros of online chat is that as long as you have an internet connection you can access it anywhere. Um, Again, with the cons, no tone of voice. <laughs> However, with online chat, you'll expect to receive a message and then reply to it pretty quickly, within about half an hour, if not less, of actually being able to 
see the message. A pro of online chat like Facebook is you can actually see when someone has seen your message, which could be a con also because they can see when you've seen their message and you could come across as rude if you do not reply within the allotted time etiquette, I guess. Another feature of online chat such as Facebook is that you can set up group conversations, which means that you can set up projects and plan out everything all in one swoop instead of messaging each person individually on their ideas. Everyone's in the know and it's just a lot easier to plan things like that. Moving on to chat rooms, however, there is a lot of people, potentially, thousands, millions even, that could be in one chat room. Mainly these are for broadcasters such as Twitch users and people talking about the person who's playing the game or whatever they're twitching about. And however, chat rooms aren't the safest way of communicating. For example, on Omegle, when you get put through to random people, you don't know what they're going to be saying or what they're going to be like or anything. So I'd say chat rooms are probably the least safe. However, it can be quite fun and interesting to meet a lot of a wide variety of people. Okay, so Web 2.0, um, pros of that, you can do whatever you want. There are some rules and restrictions and guidelines, but you can express yourself however you want and if someone doesn't like it, they can just either delete your page or not go on it. <laughs> and then it's you can just remove yourself from the situation. Um, so a con would be that if it's a YouTube channel, anyone can see it. So your privacy is so low. <laughs> you have no privacy whatsoever if you let it get to that stage. Obviously, you only share what you want. But... It can also lead to quite difficult <laughs> lifestyle if you become really successful and famous, such as YouTubers. Okay, so conferencing. Pros of that is it's easy to set up and it reduces costs on flights and travel, like hotels and stuff like that, like I mentioned earlier. And then a con would be that it's quite formal so you wouldn't really use it that much in a friend setting um but it is the best way to be able to convey what you mean because you can see the facial expressions as if you were face to face um and you can also see how you are coming across as well which is possibly arguably better than real life because you can't see the way you're saying things okay um, my personal experiences. Okay, so my personal experiences with these forms of digital communication. Okay, so email. I remember getting email when I was probably about eight, possibly younger, because I remember my dad set it up for me. I had no use for it. I think I used websites that let me email my future self, which was quite funny when I actually got them a few years ago, because I was just like, what am I talking about? But yeah, my experience with email more commonly is emailing teachers to find out work I need to hand in or let them know that I have handed it in and then also to friends to send information on certain courseworks or mainly, so if they're essentially just formal reasons I kind of used it along with newsletters and things to get deals on certain and discounts on certain brands <laughs> um, but mainly it's formal for example emailing to ask for about a job and stuff like that okay my experience with SMS and MMS I've not really ever used MMS because I haven't really ever seen the need for it um, SMS however is I remember getting my first phone when I was about nine and it was like a little, it wasn't a break, I didn't get a break, I um, got this little blue phone and it looked kind of like a pebble, um, so yeah and then I sent text through that but I, none of my friends really had them at that time, it's only until I got to secondary school that I actually really started using my phone to text and stuff like that, 
Um, moving on to online chat. Mainly I use Facebook Messenger. Um, I have used an app called WhatsApp and Snapchat. Um, WhatsApp I used for a group conversation before, I think it was before Facebook would allow you to have group chats. Um, not sure though. So, and we used to send pictures of our outfits that we were going to wear that day. Um, and then also with Snapchat, it's just a really quick way to just get a message across. And it's really quick and easy and you don't even have to do much. And it's literally a line of text and... I personally think Snapchat's the best, <laughs> but um, yeah, Facebook Messenger, you will get a respond response really quickly. Okay, so my experience with chat rooms. Okay, so I used to go on chat rooms with people I'd met from Tumblr, and I basically just talked to them about what they're doing in their lives, and their opinions on certain fan groups they're in and stuff like that. So it was just a really interesting way to meet people from across the world. Um, for example, someone who lived in Rhode Island or even Canada and just stuff like that. I don't use it as much anymore though. Okay, so my experience with Web 2.0, I use Facebook a lot, I've used Tumblr a lot, I've used Bebo, Pixo, all of these forms of Web 2.0. Um, I think I personally enjoy using these kind of um, platforms because it allows me to be creative and express myself and also there's a lot of different communities online that you can join in with and perhaps make little graphics to join in with that and I certainly got involved in that a little bit. There's been a few times where I've tried to become a YouTuber and it's I've done like video short vlogs and stuff like that um, okay, and conferencing I personally haven't done any conferencing I am NOT a fan of Skype and yeah the only thing I really use is Facebook video chat which is supported by Skype I know but I don't use it in the actual formal setting I just use it to chat with my friend when I'm bored basically <laughs> Okay, so that was my presentation on digital communication. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you feel a lot more informed. Okay, thank you, bye.